Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder. Today, I'm gonna to give you another top five list. This time, we're talking about the top five woods to use for barbecue. Now, before we jump into the list, do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on if you wanna get updated every time we put out new videos and fun barbecue content. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mad Scientist Barbecue. Now, let's start talking about some wood. Now, with wood, there are a lot of different opinions. So you look at lists online. I remember when I was first getting started in barbecue, some lists would say that oak is mild and some would say it's very strong. And it's just really hard to pin down great information on what wood you should use for what purpose. So if you go to the store, you'll find a bag of wood that says, a barbecue store that is, that says, oh, this is good for chicken and pork, uh, but not beef. Or this one's good for beef and pork, but not chicken or uh, fish. So it's hard to know exactly how to interpret that information. So I'm gonna break down my experience with wood and hopefully this list gives you some insight into what woods you should use for what purpose. Now before I give you the top five, I want to lay this piece of information down. At least from my experience, there's only one exception to this rule, but we'll get there in the video. More important than the kind of wood you're using is the kind of fire that you're burning. So you can get great flavor if you're burning a clean, healthy, oxygen-rich fire. But if your fire management isn't really on point, you can have bad flavor no matter what kind of wood. And in my experience, you can have great flavor no matter what kind of wood you're using, as long as you're burning a great fire. Before we get to number five, I want to take a chance to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community where they have hundreds and hundreds of classes to choose from. And I'm taking one right now called iPhone Filmmaking with Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. And I'm going to put that knowledge to use by the time you're watching this video. Because if you're watching this video on the day it's released or in the week after, I will be in the mountains in Colorado practicing my iPhone filmmaking because I'm going on a hunt for elk and I'll be trying to film the elk. I'll try to film the other guys who are on the trip with me and try to capture those moments that are going to really define and make the trip something enjoyable and something that I'll cherish for a long time. So that class is incredibly valuable to me. And now if you want to try out their classes, the first thousand of my subscribers who click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So you'll have full access to everything you need and you can learn so, so, so much. If that sounds like a good idea to you, go ahead and click that link in the description. So if you love to learn, Skillshare is a great place to do that. And for less than $10 a month, you have access to so much information that is really hard to come by in everyday life. So click on the link in the description, check it out. All right, number five, cherry. Now cherry is a wood that I don't use very often. I use it sometimes for specific purposes. Now there's nothing wrong with the flavor you get from cherry, but the thing that's special about cherry wood is that it does provide good flavor, but it provides amazing color, more so than any other kind of wood that I've ever used. So if you're trying to make the perfect deep, deep red color on the outside of ribs, cherry is the go-to wood for that purpose. So when I use cherry, I always use it with another wood because I want the other wood to be predominantly for flavor and the cherry to be predominantly for color. So if you want your barbecue to look as good as it tastes, if you want the appearance and its presentation to be phenomenal, having cherry as a tool in your arsenal is going to be tremendously helpful, especially for things that don't cook very long. So things like ribs or chicken, cherry is phenomenal at providing great color. Number four, mesquite. So I love mesquite for certain purposes. When I grill, so I have a PK grill right there, it's off camera. What I love to do is take mesquite, burn it down to coals in the PK grill, and then use that to grill burgers or grill steaks because mesquite provides a ton of flavor. More flavor you know, per chunk in mesquite than any of the other woods on this list. So that means that you have to deal with it in moderation, at least in my opinion. Some people say that they'll smoke a brisket for 16 hours using only mesquite. I found that to be a flavor that's too strong. It just, it's too pungent kind of. I don't really like it. I prefer other woods. But for grilling or for direct cooking over coals, mesquite is unmatched for its ability to impart flavor in a very short period of time. So if you can find mesquite in your area, have some of it on hand anytime you really want to you know, light up your taste buds when you're grilling. Number three, 
hickory. Hickory is very popular for barbecue and for good reason. Now, I believe hickory is in the same family as pecan, and their flavors are somewhat similar, but definitely distinct. So hickory, to me, is a little bit stronger than pecan. It um, has less of a sweet flavor, but what it does provide you with is very direct, straightforward smoke flavor. So it's not a very subtle wood in my experience. There are some woods that are very subtle. So if you used apple, the smoke flavor is very subtle with that. But hickory, very direct, but it's not overpowering. It's not too potent like mesquite. But if you have hickory in your area, and a lot of these choices are gonna be dependent on what you can find where you live. In California, my options were extremely limited. So I had to use what I could find. So hickory, if you can find it, is a great wood. And also, if you ever want to use wood to do a whole hog, hickory is the way to go. So in the Carolinas, people use hickory all the time. They'll build a fire, let it burn down to coals, and use the coals to cook the pig. So the reason that it's important that you have a flavorful wood, a flavor forward wood, when you're doing that is because you're not getting the full amount of smoke that you would by burning a fire in an offset smoker or something like that. So you need a wood that provides flavor up front and kind of hits you in the mouth with flavor so that when you're done cooking this whole hog, there's still plenty of smoke flavor on that thing. So hickory is number three on my list. Number two, and I think this might get me the most hate, but number two is oak. Now, there are a bunch of different kinds of oak, uh, white oak, red oak, post oak, fill in the blank oak. Uh, to me, I think that they're not all identical, but they're very similar. So some people will say that oak has a very mild flavor. Some people will say it has a very strong flavor. In my experience, oak has a mild, moderate flavor. So it's never overpowering if you're burning a clean fire, but it's definitely there. You're never searching for smoke flavor if you're using oak. Now, people always want to, you know, imitate Aaron Franklin and they want post oak. Really, if you have white oak, post oak is a kind of white oak. But if you have white oak, you got basically the same kind of thing. And so you can make, you know, traditional Texas style barbecue using oak and you don't have to have post oak that's grown in central Texas. You can make delicious stuff no matter where you are. Now for the other kinds of oak, like red oak, I haven't really noticed that much of a flavor difference really at all. It's maybe minute flavor differences, but it could just be I'm imagining it because I'm looking for something different in the flavor. But one thing I will say that does happen is that certain kinds of oak will burn hotter than other kinds. So for me, in California, the white oak that I was getting definitely burned hotter uh, than the red oak that I was getting, even at the same moisture content. So there are going to be some differences there, but in terms of flavor, not a huge difference. In terms of heating value, white oak, I think, tends to be a little bit better than other varieties. Now, before we get to number one, I want to say one thing. Whenever you go and buy wood in those little packages at a barbecue store, and it gives you a list of it can be used for these meats and not for these meats, I would say ignore it. If you're burning a good fire, you can use any of the regular smoking woods, except for probably mesquite, on anything you want to barbecue. So I've used oak to make fish, to make chicken, to make pork, to make beef, to make all kinds of stuff. I think I even did a duck with it. I mean, and it's never been off-putting in terms of its smoke flavor. So you burn a clean fire, use whatever kind of wood you want, whatever's in your area that's a good hardwood for barbecue, it'll work fine. Now, let's talk about number one, which has always been my favorite barbecue wood, and that is pecan. So for me, if I'm talking about the flavor differences between oak and pecan, it's not huge. There are subtle differences. So pecan to me tastes a little bit sweeter. Uh, the smoke flavor tastes kind of more rounded out, uh, like it kind of hits a few more notes, but it's not, you know, night and day different. So if you gave me something smoked with pecan and something smoked with oak and you said, which one is which, I would probably get it right, but I might get it wrong. So it's not a huge difference. I love pecan because I always get great color with pecan, I always get great flavor, and I get a lot of heating value. So I think the sweetness combined with all the other things that make pecan great in terms of color and flavor, set it apart as my favorite barbecue wood because it does everything I want my barbecue wood to do. And more important than any of the other factors is that it produces consistent flavor and great flavor, exactly what I have in my head as to the smoke flavor that I want. Now, with that being said, 
I have a bunch of wood behind me right here and I need to go start a fire. If you guys can still see me, thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more lists or you have more questions that you want me to answer in list form, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get to it. I hope that these have been helpful to you. If they have, like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and then follow me on Instagram at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.